The perfect companion to any table saw is a strong, sturdy off-feed table, and it doesn't get much better than this. The top is set just a little bit below the table saw surface, so the boards slide off here with ease. It only takes one person to cut the biggest piece. The nice part, too, is that with the addition of this drop wing, I've got two legs that now over double the support area of this table. And the best part, too, is that on the face side of that, you can see that there's room for storage. I'm Jim Hebe from Wood Magazine. This is easy to build. Let me show you how to do it. It's important that that outfeed table be sturdy and also to be exceptionally versatile. But more importantly, it needs to be made for your saw. So in this case, I want to measure from the floor up to the top of my table saw, which is 34 and a half. I want my off-feed table to sit about an eighth of an inch lower than 34 and a half, so as material slides off of here, there's no chance it's going to get caught on the edge. So it makes for the perfect height on this particular table to make it 34 and 3 eighths. Now for our table, we're going to be using casters like these. These are 4 inch casters, but even 4 inch casters have a difference between the base of this wheel and the top of that caster height. So what I'm going to do is mount these casters to the underside of my base. Once that's completed, laying the base on the floor, I'll measure from the top of this base to the top of my table saw height and subtract an eighth of an inch. That dimension will give me the total cabinet height. I'm going to apply the casters the same in all four corners. On the one side, we're going to have the, both the locking casters, and on the back, we'll have the regular casters. And I want their offsets in the front and the sides to be a quarter of an inch. So I'm just going to use my ruler to set this up. And mark these out. These are quarter 20 bolts with washers and lock washers on this side and just a washer and a nut on this side. And to get in the center here, I'm going to use an awl. See which works best here if I tighten them from below. Now that the first caster is installed, I'll use the same process to do number two, which again is a locking one on the same side, and then the last two casters on the back. So now, by measuring up from that base, I can see that we're sitting at 28 and a half. And again, if I take an eighth of an inch off of this, I want to be at 28 and 3 eighths. Now that I know the exact height of this, it's time to go on and start building the carcass of this table. I'm beginning by cutting the sides of this cabinet, and for my saw, the height of those is 26 and 7 eighths. Next, I cut four 3 inch wide case ribs to the same height as the sides, and then four 13 inch wide shells to the same length as the sides. To create the grooves for the cabinet shelves, I switch to a dado blade with a width matching the plywood thickness. I set the height to a quarter of an inch and added a sacrificial fence to cut the rabbits at the top and bottom edge of both sides. To cut the dados for the internal shelves, I remove the sacrificial fence. The spacing of the shelves here isn't critical. It mostly depends on your storage needs and the height that you made your cabinet. Mine ended up being 7 and an eighth inch, 7 and 7 eighths of an inch, and 9 inch between the shelves. Just make sure to make the cuts on both sides before moving the fence. Again, your distances may vary depending upon your table saw height. And now back to the workbench for a dry assembly of all the pieces. So I put each shelf in its respective opening 
and then push down on it to make sure that it fits, and it does. So now I'll take it all apart. Now it's time to pre-drill all these holes so at assembly I know exactly where they'll go in the middle of each one of these shelves. First I'm pre-drilling the holes in the grooves which will ultimately accept the shelves. Now I'm drilling the piloted holes on the underside of the top of the cabinet that will ultimately be used to attach the laminated top. Now I'm pre-drilling the holes through the sides of the cabinet that will ultimately be used to attach the case ribs. Now that all the holes are in, it's time to glue and insert the shelves. Now using a series of clamps in any spot where the case did not fit snugly, I pull all of the sides together. Now on all of the previously drilled holes, I'm using a countersink bit to provide a nice recess for each screw. And finally, I'll put inch and a half screws in all those holes. Now, flipping the cabinet over on its top, it's easy to locate the base. Making sure that the wheels are facing up and squaring each end, the overhang is three inches, and flush with the front and back, I used inch and a quarter screws to attach the wheeled base to the bottom of the cabinet. Now I flipped the cabinet over and placed it on the workbench. I'm now placing the first of four ribs. They will fit flush to the base and even on the top and set in two inches from the outside edge. Using my pre-drilled holes, I'll use a countersink bit to provide a recess for the inch and a half screws that will attach that rib. I'll repeat the same process for the final three ribs. This is the first set of pivot arms. I've cut these a little bit longer and a little bit wider than they need to be because they have to be laminated up and I'd like to give myself enough room to clean them up afterwards. So here's my process. I'm just gonna add a little bit of glue to these. And just by using a little hand pressure, I'll spread the glue. Once the clamps are on these, it'll spread that glue very nicely. Now a couple things. The glue has a tendency to make these really slippery and no matter how you try and clamp them, they always seem to be moving. So one of the things I'll do first is take a couple of small clamps and bind their edges together. You'll notice I've got some wax paper here to protect the tabletop. And while I'm gluing them up, I want them to be dead flat. And if I clamp them to a known flat surface, it'll do that. So now that I've got their ends held together, it's just a process of putting clamps in and clamping them down. Now, technically, I can take these clamps off after a half an hour or so, but the glue won't reach full strength for at least eight hours or so. So these will be allowed to sit for a while until they're thoroughly dry. This is one, I've got one more to do. To set the pivot hole in each of the two ribs on just the one side, I set my folding rule to put a mark an inch and a half in from the side and an inch and a half down from the top. Now I'll take a pivot arm and clamping it to the outside of the rib, I'll use a 3 8 inch drill bit to drill a hole from the rib all the way through to the outside edge of the pivot arm. The top of the pivot arm needs a radius, and the only way to locate a center point, now that we've drilled a hole, is to cut a 5 16 inch square peg and insert it into the hole. Drawing the diagonals on that peg gives me a center mark, and using a compass set for the outside radius, all I'm doing is drawing a radius. Then I cut that radius on the bandsaw and smoothed out the edges. I temporarily attach the pivot arms to the cabinet to mark them to a length that clears the cabinet base, along with a small diagonal to clear the caster bolts. Once those are cut, it's time to attach arm braces that will support the folding wing. With the pivot arms sandwiched together, I can mark the locations across both with a square. The first arm brace overhangs the ends of the pivot arms by three quarters of an inch. I need to make sure that the assembly is square. 
So after applying glue, I countersink and drill one screw and check it with a square before driving the second. I repeat the scoring process on the opposite end. Then the remaining arm braces are spaced five and a half inches apart. Now I've taken the completed wing arm assembly and temporarily positioned it back on the cabinet using the 3 8 bolts. Now raising the wing arm until it's even with the top of the cabinet and measuring to the floor will give me the length of the legs. From that measurement, I'll subtract 3 quarters of an inch to allow for the leg levelers. I'll also use this temporary placement to make sure the pivot arms clear the bolts when the wing arm is down. I've cut the legs to the proper size and now I'm ready to attach the brackets. I'll use a square to align the folding leg bracket flush with the end of the leg. I want to leave enough room on the side for the release tab to operate. Then I'll screw it in place. To set the leveler, I've clamped the leg in a vise. Now measuring corner to corner, I can make a mark for the drill bit. I'm now using a 7 16 drill bit to drill a 2 inch deep hole for the leg leveler. Using a crescent wrench, I screw the leg screw in to within about a half an inch of the base. Now I'll adjust that later for final height. The brackets are placed an inch and a half in from the pivot arms and a quarter of an inch in from the edge of the arm braces. Using a self-centering bit makes the placement of the screws more precise. Now it's time to place the drop wing assembly on the table. Placing a washer on the outside edge of each swing arm and then inserting a 3 8 bolt I then connected the whole assembly with another washer on the inside, a lock washer, and finally the nut. So I tighten the nuts on both sides for a smooth pivot of the drop wing. And now I can raise the drop wing and extend the feet to check the fit. It's now time to prepare the tops for both the drop wing and the table. The top of our outfeed table is an inch and a half thick. And what it means is laminating these two pieces of MDF together. I'm just going to use regular woodworker's glue. To be honest, the weight of these would probably clamp them pretty well. But I'll put them together and start throwing some clamps on. Let them sit a few hours again until they harden and I'll have a really nice, solid, inch and a half thick top. Now that these are held in place with the small clamps, I'll get some deep-throated clamps and finish that clamp up. This will be ready in a few hours. These are the tops for our table. The first is going on top of the table itself. It is MDF and it's been laminated. So I've got two pieces of MDF there. This is the top for the wing. Now this is just a single piece of MDF, but remember that the arm braces are also out of the MDF. So there'll be two pieces of those. These are all cut three quarter. So the first thing they'll do is cover the sides and the front and back of all of these. So ultimately these have to be glued in place and sanded and then we can finally place these on the ultimate table. Well this is our completed top and again remember it's a two-piece lamination of MDF. I've also got the trim strips in place and they've been all sanded. And now it's time to put the top on the case. To lay this out, I make sure that the ribs on the side are even with the top edge, and they are here, and they are as well on the back. And then finally, that the distance from the rib to the outside is the same. So it is on this side, and it is on this side. So now I know I've got it squared up. When we originally made the table, we pre-drilled holes in the top to make it easy then to attach this top to that table. 
but because of the holes and the distance inside, we can't get a regular drill in there. So that what we're going to do with this is we're going to use what's called a right angle attachment. This is it here. I still have my square drive in the front of it, but now I can insert this underneath the table and get in. And as I start the drill, you'll see it transfers this action to this action. The screws we'll be using here are inch and a half. And again, they'll go from underside to attach the top to the table. Here's how I do it. So here is our completed off-feed table in position. Now you'll notice I'm about six inches away or so from the back of the saw, and that's because of the position of my dust port in the bottom. Yours may allow you to get a little closer. I also want to make sure, and we measured this to start, that when we were finished, that that off-feed table is about an eighth inch lower than the table saw height. That way material coming off of here will not bump this. And now you can see that's right on point. Lastly, it's time to adjust the drop wing. So let me pick this up here. And I want to make sure that the tabletop and the drop wing are even, and they are. There is an adjustment on the bottom of each one of those legs, and I've made that adjustment with a wrench. So now this drop wing doubles the size of that table. This is a terrific off-feed table.